Hey guys, this is Lachette from Scarlet Moon Creations, and actually this is editor Lachette because I neglected to film this when I filmed the rest of this video. This is the continuation of my series of uh, book series I would like to finish. This is part two of the ongoing series, meaning these book series are still being written. The publishers have, um, the publishers or, and the authors have more books that will be coming out in these series. And yeah, so I forgot to film that intro. So here it is. <laughs> Let's get started. So next we have, uh, the Chrissy McMullen Mystery Series by Lois Grayman. Again, this is another like series I randomly came across at first in the um what do you call it? The supermarket and I picked it up and I loved it. So Chrissy McMullen is a psychologist in California, even though she's from the Midwest. She's just starting her practice. She's finished school and done whatever interning and working with others and she you know gets her first house and starts her practice out and then she gets all these weird people <laughs> um which should be par for the course in um a psychologist's life but um she winds up with at least one of her clients being a criminal but she's not sure which I think it is or um, she's approached by a police detective and he thinks it's one person and whatever. Hijinks ensue, that's what I say. So this is, I guess, a cozy mystery series. I didn't know what those were, but um, I've read quite a few, apparently. And this is one of my favorites. There's definitely romance. I love the relationship back and forth between... Um, Chrissy and the LAPD Lieutenant um, Jack, I think. Yes. So they have like this on again, off again relationship over the course of the series and every book. Like, some new disaster is attracted to Chrissy and she has to deal with it. Um, I just, I like it. I like it. And I love the fact that Jack is Hispanic. I think this was one of the first um, just general run-of-the-mill romance type books where the main guy was a Hispanic guy. So I love like all of his background stuff with his family because I like seeing that reflected from my life in the story I'm reading. So yeah, I don't have much else to say. Um... Other than this is adult, there are some steamy sex scenes that I love, and uh, this is not the first book. I've there are ten books. I've read six of them. Next, we have the Lord John Gray series by Diana Gamaldon. This is an offshoot from the Outlander series. I kind of forgot about this, otherwise I would have mentioned it earlier. But um, Lord John Gray is a secondary character in the Outlander series, particularly in the second book, is where he shows up the most that I remember in the series of Outlander. But then we start to follow him. Lord John Gray is a lord and an interesting guy, a good guy. Um, living with some interesting uh, personal, not choices, but lifestyle that um, is not quite accepted at that time period. This is in the past, so he is, for the most part, living in England during the late 1700s, early 1800s, and... Um, yeah, I don't know what to say because I think it would spoil Outlander. So I'm going to leave it at that. Um, I've only read one of the books. Like I said, with Outlander, I expected something 
Um, I expected it to be done. I didn't know that there was going to be all so much more. So, yeah, there are 10 books if you count all of the kind of novellas, of which there are a lot. So, technically, there are only five actual books and then five neck novellas. But I want to read those too because it's Lord John Gray. Next, we have the. Breed series by Laura Lay. Laura Lay, I really like her for this. These are erotica, basically. Um, that does not mean there's no plot to these, though. And that's why I like her. There's another series of hers, Bound Hearts, that I really like as well that I should have put in the other video, but I didn't think about it until just now. Um... But this particular erotica is paranormal, specifically shifter or wear animal focused. Um, the breeds are people who were bred in captivity, basically scientist human beings, because it's like urban paranormal fantasy. Scientists decided, oh, let's see what we get if we breed humans and animals or we um, mix and match their DNA and then put them into uh, embryos or have surrogate human women um, give birth to them. And there are several different animal breeds and it's, it's, it's romance erotica, so each book is focused on a relationship between a breed and another breed, or a breed and a human being, and the background of that particular breed is really an interesting and sexy take on um, how the world would deal with that kind of thing. Like, we've had a lot of scientific advancements um, over the course of real history that happened because certain scientists or science factions decided that some people or other beings on this planet were less than so they can do whatever they wanted to them. A lot of what we know about the female reproductive system today and how it works is thanks to doctors who did all kinds of torturous experiments on slaves or on just black people and women in general because we're less than, we're not human, so it doesn't matter what happens to us. The same thing happens to animals all the time. Um, lots of cosmetic companies do animal uh, testing on animals as do other companies because animals are not important. So it's a really interesting look. The breeds kind of st start escaping in the beginning and um, creating their own places, havens away from regular human beings. Um, th they buy land. Um, some of them uh, create relationships with uh, the government uh, while in hiding so people don't know that they're breeds and so it's just really interesting and then there's a the sexy times which I love in as well so do check out Laura Lay's series by the breeds this is not the first book but um, it's a lot and I'm actually selling those books because as much as I enjoy them I don't need to keep them so if you would like some let me know hit me up in the comments. Um, the next series I'm going to talk about is Sea Haven by Christine Feehan. Again, I mentioned earlier I like her as an author. I just don't love her series as they keep going all the time. This is a series related to the Drake sisters, which she did before, which I enjoyed. That was six or seven books, and that's complete. But um, Sea Haven, we're following women who have some sort of psychic powers. I don't remember more than that, only that they all wind up being drawn to Sea Haven, some island or coastal town or something like that. 
and um, they, they're they slowly going to meet each other over the course of time. This is paranormal romance because the psychic power stuff. The romance part comes in because there are various men that they come into contact with that they wind up falling in love with or having relationship with um some of these men have government or military ties others are i think going to be regular i don't know the thing is i've only read one book out of the six in this series i'm going to start from the beginning because i don't remember the details and i couldn't find the book um i just think it's it's kind of an offshoot from the Drake sisters, which was very similar, except the Drake sisters were six sisters, um, so they have a family gift, um, of having psychic powers, and, um, they all live in a coastal town, and then they met various men in different, uh, times or whatever. Uh, but the government started finding out they had these powers of various types. Like, one could control water, like the ocean. Not the whole ocean, but a lot of it. And, um, stuff like that. Uh, another could speak psychically with other people. So, the government is like, hey, we want you. And the sisters are like, no thanks. I just want to run my flower shop or whatever. I don't know. Um, and then they start sending people to kidnap them. And just other things ensue. And it's craziness. Um, and I think one of the guys who winds up marrying one of the sisters is still working for the government. But a branch that's not so bad. And then he tells them that there are other women out there like them, but they don't have, you know, that family bond, that protection that they do. And so the Sea Haven series starts kind of like that, I think, or because of that. So it sounded interesting. I do want to continue it. Like I said, there are six books so far. I think there's going to be at least one more. Um, unlike the Drake sisters, it's not like there's only a certain amount of sisters, so we could stop here. I don't know what she's gonna do, so check it out. The next is, uh, Midnight Texas by Charlene Harris. So, uh, Charlene Harris is the author of the, um, Sookie Stackhouse series, which is what the TV show True Blood was based off of. I read, um, the Sookie Stackhouse series. Before the TV show came out, well, for the most part, because there were still books coming out in, when it first started. So I enjoyed that. The TV show is darker and bloodier somehow than the uh, than the book series, but I like it. And um, I picked up Charlene Harris's first book in Midnight Texas because I was like, let's see what it's about. And the first book was Midnight, Texas. I didn't know what I was getting into. This is definitely a paranormal something. Um, there's just a whole bunch of weird people, odd people living in a very tiny ass town called Midnight, Texas. And things happen there. I don't know what the next book is going to be. It's called Day Shift. I don't know what it's about, but I'm interested. I'm interested to find out the next thing. There's not really romance. Um, so it's a low priority for me because I, I'm not even going to lie or like feel shameful. But I like romance in my books. It makes me feel good. Also, I'm a lonely bitch. So yeah, um, the next series is The Bells by D Danielle Clayton. I read The Bells earlier this year. I loved it. I do want to read Everlasting Rose. And the next book, I think this is going to be just a trilogy, but I can't be sure. The third book, because uh, Everlasting Rose came out this year, the third book may or may not come out next year. I don't know. So I've only read one of these books. I quite enjoyed it. It was very atmospheric. The Bells is a uh, YA fantasy set in this French-like world 
where um, everybody wants to be beautiful. The Bells are um, these girls who are raised because they have the ability to create beauty, basically. They can change people's faces um, and mold their bodies to conform to whatever type of beauty um, they want to. And um, we start out with the girls going through this kind of competition, this beauty competition, to figure out where they'll be assigned in the country. And our main character winds up being assigned to the palace, to the king and queen and princess, only to find out that, hey, everything is not as great and happy as wonderful as it seems. Um, people who can't afford beauty treatments are shunned by society to the point where they can't get food or shelter. Um, and there's even worse things going on in the capital, in the palace. And um, by the end of the book, there's all of this political intrigue. And it's a very interesting look at um, how beauty is scene and how it affects everything um, in a person's life when they can when it's so prevalent in society um, and by the end of the first book you know our main character finds out that there's more to the world than what she was told and what she um, grew up knowing and so she's off to a new adventure and I want to know what happens next so um, that is a series I would like to continue I started that like I said earlier this year next another this year first read the saga this is another uh, well it's not a manga but it's um graphic novel series book to darling everybody loves this and when i read the first volume i was like no wonder it's so freaking good so good amazing this is by brian k vaughn and or vohan and uh what did i write kona staples hona staples and the artwork is amazing and we basically follow two people who are living in outer space this is uh sci-fi yeah let's go with sci-fi fantasy thing they're of two opposing races which are at war with each other in space across various planets um one one race has a whole bunch of planets and another has other and they're basically fighting each other and I think um they meet each other and kind of like it's I guess it's kind of insta love to an extent or no 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 um we come in after they've met and fell in love and everything like that we both sides find out that um he's he's deserted his post and and she is helping him or whatever but they fell in love got married and they're having a baby we come in when the baby is born that's what it is because the story is told by the baby she's telling it in past tense i think it's she there's so much rep in here I can't even go into it, but it's multicultural, it's multisexual, it's uh, 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 gender uh, is what it is. Whatever character they say they are, that's what they are. Um, it doesn't matter. We have all these races, of course, um, imaginary, specific to this world, but also... Um, not and uh it's so good it's um very adult we start literally seeing her giving birth and um there's some blood and gore and also lots of cursing i guess i don't know 
But that's what people say as adults, so I'm saying it's adults. Um, check it out. The action is great. The dialogue is great. It's all very realistic and still fantastical. Uh, then we've got The Women's Murder Club by James Patterson. Now, most of these books, though all these books are written by James Patterson, but a lot of them he also co has a co-author for. Um, so don't be turned off. It's very easy to find these books because they all have numbers on the cover. So it's like First to Die is the first book. I've read six of them and there are 20. And there might be more coming. Um, basically, we follow a bunch of women who have something, have work on murders. So one of the main characters is a detective um, in a major city. Another character, I think, is in the FBI. Another character is a um, forensic scientist um, and stuff like that. So they're the Women's Murder Club. They all kind of come together in the first book. For the most part, they meet each other there or... Though two of them, I think, already know each other and the others, like, meet each other over the course of this case. So each book we have a different case. A couple of times there's a case that spans multiple books, but that's not the main thing. Um, sometimes we focus, we see the whole group. Other times, just one or two members. And, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's a thriller series there it's it's about their cases and their lives how that affects them um and each other uh and yeah no fantastical elements at all it's just very thrillery and i like it it was very i think that was the first time for me coming across those types of books or these types of books and the lead detectives and everyone you know that we're following who are solving the cases are all women so um do check that out next we have the reluctant royal series by Alyssa cole i do want to finish this i read a prince in theory a couple about a month ago and then I recently finished the novella which is like 1.5 book 1.5 of the series that was a once ghosted twice shy and I enjoyed that more than a prince in theory I am interested in reading more I quite like the fact that we have black people as the main characters um this is a contemporary romance series with a royal element. Each book has someone, um, at least one of the main characters is royalty of some kind. I was trying to figure out how that was going to work before I started the series. Like, is it a family? And then we see every member get married, which is fine because... I've read stuff like that with historical fiction. Why not contemporary, modern stuff? Um, and this is kind of new to me. The idea of black people, people who look like me, as royalty and getting that romance. Um, so I enjoyed it. I do want to continue it. Um, they're fun and quick reads. Next up, the Bone Season series. So, this is by Samantha Shannon. Um, and there are said there are supposed to be seven books in the series. There are currently three, I think, early 2020. A fourth one is coming out. I recently read the Bone Season, and wow. I didn't love it because I didn't enjoy it because it was really dark. Dark as in there were no good positive outcomes to be had really in the story. Um, it was just that realistic. I liked the characters and everything. I, 
Um, I really want to see where it's going. The world created is this futuristic one where the government is ruling everything, but it's not quite as it seems. Um, people with psychic powers are considered to be unnatural and the government basically rules everything so they can find every psychic um, or clairvoyant as they're called in the series and get rid of them. Um, all clairvoyants are sent to the tower once they are found and they are tortured for information on other clairvoyants and then supposedly killed. Um, we follow our main character, Paige. I think it's Paige. I could be wrong. Who is a clairvoyant from Ireland. Her dad is not. He works for the government as a scientist, I believe. And they move to London. And when they move to London, Claire, uh, Paige... Um, hooks up with a friend she met in Ireland and she joins the syndicate which is like the underground crime um, just like uh, the mob basically instead of crime lords they're mime lords um, and they protect the most powerful clairvoyants in exchange for having them commit crimes most of these crimes are basically um, clairvoyant crimes they're it's a crime for them to even exist, so... Um, but there's other stuff they do, but this is in exchange for money and survival and being able to keep under the radar of the government. Claire commits a crime with her clairvoyant powers, killing someone, and then the government sends out, you know, a whole bunch of people to go find her and bring her to the tower. She gets caught, and then the story goes from there. What happens at the tower and what's really going on is quite fascinating and fantastical. Um, and this, this is a story about there's no good uh, choices. You just make the best that you can in the situation that you can when there's no out, there's no freedom. Um, like, yeah. So I enjoyed it. I, I waited a couple of weeks thinking, like, do I want to finish this? But I do. I want to know what happens because I would like, you know, the clairvoyance to be free and that's, that's ultimately what I need from this series. Even if it takes a long time. But that's realistic. So it's okay. Uh, <clears throat> the next series I have is Weather Wardens by Rachel Kane. Now, I finished this series. I was so sure I finished this. But I lent out the books that I have to my grandmother to read. And I was checking on Goodreads like, oh yeah, what's the last one? Because I didn't have them all together. Um, so I was looking to make sure I was giving her the whole thing, and I gave her all I had, and then it's like, yeah, new book coming out 2020, and I'm like, wait, what? 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 So there are going to be more. Um, I think it's an offshoot of this series. Um, same world, new main character being followed. So... I would like to continue it. This is really unique. Like, I've never read anything like this. Um, I'm not saying nothing else like this exists. I just never read it or heard of it. So, check out the Weather Wardens. We follow Joanne Baldwin, who is a Weather Warden. Basically, her magical powers are about controlling some form of the weather. Weather Wardens do that. They all have some different type of power that controls the weather and a lot of the energy and how they control the weather comes from the control of gin or genie and it goes from there um we joanne is like 
the bottom of the barrel low rung general worker, but she starts working her way up as she gets more powerful, um, finding out more about the World Council who runs the Weather Wardens and what's really going on with them and the Jin. This is this is pretty intense. Um, and there's there's somebody she falls in love with. I don't even remember at this point, but I'll probably reread this from the beginning because one, I loved it, and two, it's interesting, and three, we're getting more, which is completely unexpected. So yeah. Okay, so next series we have Cassandra Palmer. This is by Karen Chance. Another I really do like. This is following the character Cassie, Cassandra Palmer. Um, she could she's um uh, she has powers, she can see the future and communicate with spirits. Um that makes her attractive to the dead and the undead. So ghosts and vampires. Um she is like an indentured servant to a vampire and a vampire clan and then um even though she tries to avoid them unfortunately um she you know winds up fortunately unfortunately she winds up escaping she tries to go to the vampire senate and they find out that she's stronger as the she than they than she thinks she is, and they put her under their protection, and things go from there. Poor Cassie is all I can say about this. I feel bad for this girl, for this woman. Um, Cassie goes through a lot in this series, and it's really fast-paced. Sometimes you're just like, wait, what's happening? What, what, what? What, 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 what? I usually have to read, especially the most recent books, uh, the books twice, because I'm like, I feel like I missed something. Usually didn't. It's just so fast paced. Like, this is what she's going through. This is what people are putting her through. A lot of things just happen to her because of the power she has. She winds up give, being given a lot of responsibility and expected to do a lot of things with no time to breathe, no time to rest, no time to heal, no time to revitalize anything. Everybody wants her and some are attracted to her, but it's really interesting. Um, there is some mythological element to this as well. I just, I don't even know how to describe this. Just poor, poor Cassie. <laughs> Well, this is a good series. I have, um, let's see, I've read six of these books and there are currently 11 out. There's an offshoot series that I'm just throwing in there as well. Um, it's about one of the vampire senator's daughter and I think there's only three of those books so I enjoy those as well. Um, her point of view of what's going on and, uh, in the world that they all inhabit is very interesting. This is urban fantasy as well, so this is all happening behind the scenes of what, you know, human beings are regularly dealing with because most humans know, don't know that, you know, all of these paranormal beings exist. Next, we have the Goldie Vance series. This is another, uh, graphic novel series that I came across and read for the first time this year. Um, this is kind of a historical, I don't think it counts, maybe not. Um, it's like 1950s, 60s, and Nancy Drewish, we follow Goldie who likes to solve problems and is nosy as hell, too. Uh, the first book I read, uh, the first volume I read was really cute. I like the art style. It's very cute. It's very sweet. Um, but also, like I said, very Nancy Drew-esque. Um, Goldie is trying to find out who stole 
um, this, this valuable jewel um, from one of the guests that are staying in the hotel her father works in. Um, and for some reason, her, I forget why her father is accused of stealing and so he's fired. So that's the extra impetus for Goldie to go and find out what happened. It turns out to be this whole elaborate scheme. I do believe there are aliens involved. Not anything that anyone was expecting at any point in time. So, yeah. Um, but still, simple to follow and fun and cute to read. I definitely want to read more. I read the first volume, which I think has four issues in it uh, earlier this year. And there are four currently out now. And it's still more to come. This is by Hope Larson and Brittany William, by the way. I didn't mention that. Next up, we're almost done, guys. We've got the FBI thriller series by Katherine Coulter. This is another thriller series that I really enjoy. Um, I like Katherine Coulter as a writer in general, so I do read a lot or most or all of her standalone thrillers. Um... But I like following Lacey and Sherlock, um, or Sherlock and Savage, I should say, because I think it's Lacey Savage and Lacey Sherlock and something Savage, what is it? Anyway, um, there are two FBI workers, uh, detectives who go out on cases. Most of the time it's, uh, six killers or some extreme type of killer I like their dynamic I mm, I do believe they're married this is not the first book um, we follow them most of the time but sometimes we follow some of the other agents they've worked with um, they don't always work exclusively together uh, sometimes Savage is with someone else or Sherlock is with another person. It's really interesting. They're like opposites in looks, but she takes the lead while he usually takes a back seat or whatever and he's the calm one. Um, I don't know. It's just something about the two of them that I enjoy seeing them solve the cases and love it. This is an adult thriller series by Catherine Coulter. I checked. There are 23 books and I've read 14 so I've got some catching up to do. Next up we've got, okay so before I, I get into that, let's talk about The Others by Anne Bishop. I'm leaving the other one for last. I love this series. I almost didn't put this on this list. I don't know where my brain was at but I love this series. Um, this is, I love this author as well. I, there's nothing I've read by her that I have not loved. And this is paranormal fantasy or urban fantasy. And, uh, basically we're set in on earth, but the world is different. Human beings are supposed to stay to their little towns and villages and certain cities and while the majority of the world is taken over and lived in by the others. The others are basically otherworldly beings, paranormal beings. There are all kinds of shifters, there's vampires, there's fae, and there are the elementals, I think they were called. Um, and all kinds of things. There are also human beings who have some sort of psychic power. For example, we have in the first couple, the first several books we follow Meg for the most part, and she is what's called a Cassandra Sang, or a blood prophet. She cuts her skin, and when she bleeds, she sees prophetic images. She was raised in this facility by regular human beings, that basically used her powers for profit, money, profit. 
Um, and she and her sisters saw none of it. They were just cut and groomed to do what they were told. They didn't get any real life experience. Meg escapes that, um, and uh, so do a couple of her other sisters, I think. I forget how, but they Meg escapes. She gets separated from the others, and she winds up in this uh, the lakeside courtyard, which is not a literal courtyard, but um, one of the small connections between human, the small human society set up, and the others. So, like, think about. I think how they describe it is like the United States, for example. There's like what the original 13 colonies, that area is where human beings live in various size settlements. I call them settlements. Some of them are like that, like little settlements. Some are towns like Lakeside, others are cities. But that's it. The rest is the wild. The wilderness. And it is filled with others that most humans have no contact with and don't know. Between the two in various areas are these little courtyards, as the others call them. Where some others who were either nominated to or decided they want to out of curiosity, they live in these courtyards and deal with humans. Humans have to, like, ask for permission to travel through other territory, which is majority of the world. So, Meg winds up at this courtyard, and all of these others are like, what the hell are you? Like, she's human, but not quite. She's different from all the other humans, and things kind of go from there. And it's so fascinating. I love it. And I didn't even think about how chunky this was when I picked it up. I was just like, hmm, what's this? And then pleasantly surprised and pleased because Ambus's other books are nothing like this. Um, and they're not urban at all. They're fantasy, but not like this. Um, so there are, I don't even know, I think I've read most of the books of this that are out. I think there might be one or two I doubt it. I think there's just one that I haven't read and I still want to keep going even though we're not following Meg and Simon anymore. That's okay. Last but not least, definitely not, we have a book series written by someone I actually know and I quite enjoy it and I want to continue it. Um, the Rhea Miller and the Monsters by Nigel Henry. Um, Nigel is someone I went to college with. Uh, he has another series out that I enjoyed, but uh, not as much as this one. Rhea Miller is a uh, YA paranormal uh, fantasy series following Rhea Miller. Rhea Miller is a... Uh, 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 black girl who lives in Brooklyn but winds up going to school in Harlem and her family basically hunts and kills monsters and she picks up the family um uh, uh what you would call it practice basically and yeah but it turns out there is stuff going on in her school with other teenagers. Some of it is uh, accidental. Some of these people don't know they are what they are. Or they are not in control of their abilities because they are young. While there are others and even adults who are very much aware and kind of use her high school as a... Uh, uh, feeding grounds or or place to recruit and um Rhea is trying to deal with that while keeping everything that she does and that her family does for a living on the down low not telling her new friends 
Um, she's also dealing with stuff like, oh, now she has to go to school in Harlem, and she's from Brooklyn, and all that stuff. And it's, it's, it's fun. I love Rhea's attitude. I love her personality, and I want to read more. I only read the first book. Um, I didn't realize he was, he's been putting out so many. <laughs> he's put out so many already. There are six. Um, the sixth one actually, I think, comes out next year. So, or is it December this year? I forget, but do check out Rhea Miller and the Monsters series. They're available on an ebook form on Kindle via Amazon. Check them out. Leave Nigel a great review because it is a good series. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I am finally finished. Good thing I split this into two videos because as I was filming this, I filmed it all at once and I was like this a lot this a lot so thank you so much for watching let me know if you've read any of these series have you finished them from the ones where i'm like i think it's still going let me know if you have the dl what's like what's happening with the series are they do they come out often or not um which ones are your favorites? Are there any that you think I should prioritize or over others? And um, just, just give me all the gush in the comments because that's why I'm here to talk about the books that I love. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.